thank God for my husband. I thank God that God is blessing my husband. Amen. Praise God. I, I'm glad he's blessing him on this side. Amen. Amen. It's a blessing because we're on the downside. And I want these latter years to be better than the first years. Amen. 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 Praise God. So I'm happy about it. And I'm excited that God has a word for MCF on today. So without further ado, say amen for Pastor Bland. If you will, get your Bibles. Let's turn to 2 Timothy. Always glad to see and to greet those who are members of the household of faith. The Bible says that we are to have love one to another. Amen. And to me, Tyrone, love simply means um, to place your interests before mine. It's easy to say you love someone, but love is an action word. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave. It's hard for me to believe that you love somebody and you don't ever give them nothing. It's, it's hard. You, 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 you talk all about how you love, but when it comes time for giving and everything, it's a whole, it's a whole different. You, you love, and that's the reason that God told him, he said, what you trying to give me stink in my nostrils. He said that your, your mouth, your lips, say one thing, Uncle George. He said, but your heart Amen. is far from me. So then we just thank the Lord for those are house of the household of faith and and we thank the Lord that we don't have to try to do this alone or by ourselves it's uh, so wonderful when you have someone else to depend on it's so wonderful when you have others that can encourage you when you get low All right. All right. because Tara contrary to what um, has been uh, told us Everybody's going to need somebody sometime. Uh, uh, no, nobody stays up on top of the mountain all the time. No, nobody is encouraged all the time. And so then it's, it's a great thing to have a friend. And it's a great thing to, to have people in your life who sincerely are concerned about you and yours. Look at your neighbor and say, I thank God for you. I thank God for you. That doesn't take anything away from me because I thank God for you. Doesn't take it. We, we, we've been, we've allowed Lady Deborah the world to socialize us in church. You know, folks that got so wonder they come to church and act funny. You should have left that foolishness on the outside. This right here is for desperate folk. You understand? This right here ain't for winners. This is for losers. This right here, this congregation, this meeting up is for folks who the world whooped up and beat up and, and, and thank you, Jesus. And you ran in with your hands up saying, I give. You ran in saying, I lost the battle. I tried to run my own life. I tried to be my own boss. I tried to direct my own path. But I found out one day, Mother Nun, that can't nobody do you like Jesus. Do you know what it is to have a conviction? To have a conviction means that you know something. You can say what you want to say. But I know that I know that can't nobody do me like the Lord. So then I may not have what you have or enjoy what you enjoy. But just give me Jesus. We'll be all right. I know you feel sorry for me and everything, but I'll be all right. Uh-huh, because you see, I found out one day that weeping don't mean, Kathy, that a child of God don't have to cry. Thank you, Jesus. I got to walk way up here and shake your hand on that. Uh, because, you know, sometimes we feel like that everything's supposed to go wonderful for us. And we're not ever supposed to have to cry. Nothing's supposed to come my house. But I heard him say, Lady Deborah said, that weeping may endure for a night. But just hold on, child of God, because joy, joy comes in the morning. Have you experienced it? Won't he make a way? Won't he open up a door? And I ain't talking about no door, Fred, that you saw, but I'm talking about a door where there was no door. The old people put it like this. My God will make a way out of no way. 
Oh, I'm glad about him this morning. I don't mean to, I ain't gonna try to hold you all morning, but but I come this morning, Brother Lewis, to show enough have church. I come this morning to show enough tell him thank you. Thank you. If I don't learn nothing new, the Lord have already done enough for me that if I just think back over what God has done and where he brought me from, it's enough right now, Brother Brimley, for me to shout on in the glory. Thank you, Lord. Second Timothy. Hmm. Second Timothy. Let's look at the third chapter. No. No. Let's look at the second chapter. Second Timothy 2. Lady Deborah, we started last week uh, on, a, on the series uh, talking about life. 101. God led me to this and said, you know, it's a, it's a blessing in humbling yourself. Because you see, the Bible says that God gives grace to the humble. And you've actually got to humble yourself, Brother George King, in order to realize that what you need is grace. You see, folks, most folks at church think what they need to do is, is to make up their mind. The reason that I hadn't done this is because I just ain't made up my mind. But the truth of the matter, you done made up your mind I don't know how many times about what you were going to do and what you wasn't going to do and, and all of that. You made your mind up. But, but, but what I found out was is that the things that I say that I'm not going to do, I yet find myself doing it. And then I'm glad to find this out, Mother Blant, it, it ain't just me. Because you see, folks try to act like that it's you. Because you don't sit on the front row with you know, all white on. Now, you're not sitting up in the pulpit with, thank you, Jesus. But I come to find out that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so then everybody needs what Jesus did because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And so somewhere down the line, I've got to give up on this getting strong and make up my mind and cry out to God and say, God, help me. God, help me. Do, do, do you know what it means to get desperate? Do, do you know what it means for, I'm, I'm talking about snotting desperate. I'm, I'm talking about ugly desperate. I'm, I'm talking about you don't care no more about what you got on or what nobody think about it. All I know, my brother, is I need God to help me. Then I cry out and I say, God, help me. And I got a reason for calling on you, Lord. Uh, help me because I can't help myself. You, you know, it's a wonderful thing, Robert, when you get to the place that you don't want to be where you are no more. You see, we've been walking around telling, you know what, they won't let me and look at, you know, they won't give me an opportunity. And if I, but, but you see, when you realize that can't nobody help me anyway but God. And so then if you can't help me, just move out of my way. <laughs> say what you want to say. Look at me. You know how folk got a funny way of looking upside your head. Look all you want to. Suck your teeth. Roll your eyes. Cross your legs. Do whatever you want to, honey. But I come this morning to meet the real, true, and living God. And I know I know just like David said David said that my God is a present help in a time of trouble you know how folk want to put you off Mr. Davis say well I'm going to help you but come back next week I, I'm, I'm going to help you let me think about it I'm, I'm gonna, but, but the Bible says that my God is a present help in a time can you call on him can you call on him uh -huh. when man put you off and said well I'm going to get back with you you, you can walk away and say, you know what? I didn't need your help no way. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Paul says here, life 101. You see, <laughs> life does not come necessarily with an instruction manual. And, and we get a lot of our instructions, Brother Alex, from the wrong people. <laughs> Many of us tried to be married like we thought our daddy was married, you know. Walking through the house, stomping, telling folks about who I am and all that. And then you like to get your head busted to the fat with that foolishness. Because these women ain't taking that stuff today that you Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Second Timothy 2 and 1. The Bible says here, Paul talking to Timothy, which he characterizes Mother Nun as his son in the gospel. He says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace, not strong in yourself, but it's something that's called grace. Grace simply means, Sherry, that God gives you something that you don't deserve. 
Mercy being the exact opposite of you not getting what you deserve. But now grace is when I receive something that's so wonderful that I could not acquire it or possess it on my own. But God, because of his love. Have you ever had anybody to love you? Folks that love you just give you something you know you don't deserve it. You know you ain't acting right. You know you really ain't paying them no attention. But that very person that you don't even have nothing to do with come up and just give you what you need. That was God. God he said to be strong in the grace. Understand that you're not dealing with man. You see, man is like this right here. If you scratch my back, I scratch yours. You come to my anniversary, I come to your anniversary. Uh, you put $100 in my offering, I put $100 in your offering. But God is not like man. God said at one point, if I was hungry, I wouldn't even tell you. God don't want nothing from none of us. And so I'm so glad to be at Manasseh because y'all had God just as hungry as I was. Every time I came to church, God needed this and God needed that. Then you tried to blackmail me out of me and everything. Is you trying to rob God? Thank you, G. I ain't never robbed a human being. Now you telling me I'm robbing God. Robbery is different than stealing. I'm a lawyer. I know that now. stealing is when you ain't looking. I just come get it. But robbery means you got it in your hand, and I just come take it out of your hand. Thank. Will you? Thank you, Jesus. What come to find out is, is that God is not making hard terms with me. God actually wants to give me something. But first, I got to quit trying to get it myself. The only thing that's ever kept me from possessing what God has is, is because in my self-will, I tried to go get it myself. I told God, I said, God, you go help Mother Nun. She can't do no better. God, go help Brother Lewis. Well, I got this right here. I can take care. So God had to let me go in my own strength. God had to let me make shipwreck. God had to let me go all the way down to the bottom so that just before I drowned, just before I was gone, I cried out from the depths of my soul and said, Lord, help me. And when I cried, <laughs> Uh, from the depths, my brother, then God heard my cry. And, and from the depths, he pulled me up and put me up on a rock to stay. And what I love about that is, is that many times you're around people who don't really rejoice in the fact that you are doing better. Many times it hurt folk because they thought that you wasn't going to never be nothing. It's a many times it hurt folk because they thought you never would get it right. But what I like about the Lord said that I lifted you up out the muck and the mire. They didn't get you up out of it. And so what you have to do is, Mother Bland, you have to get over this thing about wanting folk to be happy for you. You, you, you have to understand, and that's the reason that David said, I, I encouraged myself. Sometimes you have to just take your hand and just begin to pat yourself on the back and, and tell you, say, you know what, you're doing real good. I double the, I dare you to do this right here. <laughs> that when you get home, don't go right in the house. Just walk around it. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> just, just walk around the house. <laughs> See, because you just been going in the house. You really ain't been recognizing what God has done. <laughs> just walk around the house and look how good my God has been. <laughs> now, you waiting on them to say it, but you, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> right. you, you waiting on them to talk about how good that you done done. <laughs> But you see, God don't need, God said, he said one time, he said, if you don't praise me, the rocks will begin to cry out. Man don't praise God, but every, early in the morning, get up, and the sun gonna get up praising him. Listen to the birds. The little birds are talking about how good that God have been from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. So we're just starting on this thing in life 01, 101. And like Lady Deborah said, you know, we, we, we in the twilight years, you know, crossing 60, heading into the end of this thing. But it's okay. It's all right. Because you see, you don't get there till you get there. I can't be where you are. I, I can only be where I am. And you know what? God, life 101, there's certain lessons, there's certain basic things. And some of us are trying to be too advanced. You, you see, you you and you 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 done skip some grades. 
You don't skip some grades. Now, now you up in trigonometry and you ain't never even took basic math. What, what you need to do is get a little humility. Tell the teacher the truth. Say, ma'am, I don't need to be in this class right here. I, I, I'm lost. <laughs> you ever been in a class, you realize you wasn't prepared? You said, they ain't prepared me for this right here. I need to go back and I need some remedial classes. <laughs> oh, now it don't feel good because you want to be in the high class. You, you want to be way up there. But you know what, Alexa? If I will humble myself under the mighty hand of God, God, in due time, God will exalt. Do you know it don't take long for God to promote you? Some of the very folk that were looking at you putting their nose up and everything, you done passed them and way on down the road. But what happened was you humbled yourself and you said, you know what, God? I don't really know how to be married. God, I don't really know how to raise these children. God, I don't really know how to come in and go out. Ain't that what Solomon said? Solomon said, you done exalted me above my brothers. You made me king over this great nation, but I ain't ready to do this. When I ask you to do God, just teach me, God. Teach me, God, how to come in and come out. And God told Solomon, you didn't ask me for great riches. You didn't ask me for fame. All you asked me for was some good sense. All you asked me for was the way to live. And because of your humility, because that you humble yourself, I'm going to make you richer than any man that ever Thank you, Jesus. But, but boy, I, I got with my mind here, Lord, 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 I'm gonna humble myself where I can get some help. In life, 101, you can start me at the very basics, God. It, it, it's okay, because I know that in due time, you'll put me wherever you wanna be. Y'all ready? He told him, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me. Now, this Timothy talking to Paul. Help me this morning, Lord. Let me just go and give my subject, y'all, because I'm set on preach. I promise to God I could be going about 90 right now, but I'm trying to stay around 30 or 40. Uh, let me go and take my subject. Look, look at your neighbor. Look, look him right there in the eye. It's a simple subject. Just tell him, say, pass the baton. Pass the baton. Very, very simple. For past the baton, I, I found out when I was watching my brother the 440 relay and watching all that, that 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 one man didn't run the race. He, it wasn't the man that started, wasn't the one that went across the finish line, but he had something in his hand which was a baton. And when he went so far, it was not his duty to go no farther. His time was over. Yeah, he wasn't the one that was going. Even though he started the race, he was not the one that they were going to be shouting about when he got across. But his duty was was to get as fast as he could, to go as long as he could, and when he got to a certain place of the book, to pass it to the next man. Look at somebody else and just tell him to pass the baton. You see, what I found out, Fairy Dean, is, is that life really ain't about us. Life ain't really about us. And so many times, see, Greg, people, we try to create a legacy for ourselves. We love to leave monuments. We love to leave stuff. We love for folks to name building after us. We, we love to think that our name is going to be here forever. But I want you to know something, uh, uh, Sister Scroggin. No matter how great that you are, uh, folk going to forget about you. Folks gonna forget about you. They gonna bury you. They gonna talk a whole lot about you on that week between you die and when they put you in the ground. But after they put you in the ground, th th that's it. But now, your part, what you have gone through and what you're going through, Tyrone, is not about you or for you, but it's about who you touch and who moves on with what you pass on. And so now Paul has a message, which is a very controversial message. And even the church has walked away from Paul's message on today. When you go to church and the pastor get up and begin to preach, I want you to start noticing what his text will come from. Most of the time it will come from Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. He does not want to carry on Paul's message. You say, and people will tell you sometimes, they'll say, you know what, I like the Gospels, but I don't really care for Paul's message. Because you see, Paul's message is a message of hopelessness to self. Paul says that there is no good thing that dwells in, see, the first thing before you can access God, you got to give up on yourself. Long as you want to be apostle, long as you want to be bishop, doctor, long as you want everybody to give you all the praise, then God, then Jesus, see, even John said as the forerunner, they came to John, they said, John, 
there's another man down by the, by the Jordan, and he's baptizing folks, and he's telling folks that his baptism is the right baptism. They wanted John to go against Jesus. But John told them, he said, I must decrease that he must increase. I'm just a forerunner to him. I'm just making the way straight. I'm clearing it out. But there's one coming. I baptize you with water. But there's one coming after me who's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. What I'm doing is just a symbol of cleansing. But he's actually going to let, allow the spirit to be within you where that you can know the life of God just pass the baton he says and the things that thou hast heard of me you see they don't want you to preach Paul's message they want you to preach the message that Jesus preached when he was on his earthly uh, mission here when he came to the Jews Jesus was up under the law he preached nothing contrary to the law he, the Galatians say he was born under the law as a matter of fact, Kathy, he said, don't think I come to destroy the law, but I come to fulfill the law. You see, the law had to be fulfilled. You see, as long we were married to the law, Romans the seventh chapter, as long as a man is married to someone, it's not lawful for him to be married to somebody else. You can't be married to somebody else. And so we was married to something that had condemned us because there's nobody sitting here that can keep the law. There's nobody here that can 100% not lie. You'll lie before you know it. You'll go home and say, you know what, I lied. I didn't even have to tell that. Anybody here, don't hold your hand up. Anybody here ever told a lie? No, you didn't even have to tell the lie. And the Bible says that if you break one law, you've broken them all. People that's in prison didn't break every law. They just had to break one law. Thank you, Jesus. But we was married to something that was killing us. We was married to something that had condemned us to hell. But how can you be married to something else when you're married to the law? It's not lawful for you to have two wives. You're married to the law. And so what Christ Jesus had to do was he had to take the law upon himself. He had to perfectly keep the law. And he took the law and they nailed him to the cross. And Colossians says that when they nailed him to the cross, they nailed the law that was against us, the ordinances, the commandments, all that that was against us, they nailed that to the cross as well. And I want you to know, like the Baptist preacher said, he died. <laughs> He died one Friday evening, <laughs> and when he died, then that made it lawful for us to be married to another. You see, if you're married to somebody and they die, whoo, you be saying, thank the Lord. You go to the funeral to make sure they did. <laughs> Y'all don't like the real truth. Uh-huh. Sometimes God gives you something, sometimes you go get something. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Some of us just have grace. Because I went to go let Lady Deborah, I sure wasn't looking for nothing. If I had a guy what I was looking for, y'all would be crying for me. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all so funny when y'all come to church. You must not be comfortable. I, I have to talk to you out on the parking lot there. But because he died, he released us from the law. And now we're free to be married to another. And so now we're no longer married to the law. But now I'm married to Christ Jesus and, and, and we are one. So Paul came with a new message that this man Christ Jesus can, can give you liberty and give you freedom and put you in a standing that the law never could. And so what Paul is telling, Paul is telling him, you, my mama, you stand up. Stand up. What Paul, I know it. I thank God you can still stand up. <laughs> Only thing I got against you is quit spending my money. That money that you got now ain't none of your money. That's my money. So, turn, turn that way. So all, all, all no, we got to do it this way since I'm the youngest. Hold it right there. All, all Paul is telling, no, I don't want you to say nothing. Talk, cut it off. No, Jesus. All Paul, all, all Paul is, is, is telling Timothy is, Timothy, don't go off on your own. Timothy, don't get yours. God has deposited some within me. And don't you let these other folks out here give you nothing. See, because that will come a time. He, Paul tells him, he said, look, he said, all in Asia have left me. They've left me. Now, what, what he's saying about left me? What he's saying about left me is they've left the message. 
they've left the message that you're saved by grace through faith. That not of yourself. You ain't saved by the tithes that you pay. You ain't paid because you go to church. You ain't saved because you went to the anniversary. But you are saved because of the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary's cross. And that only can save you. Your good works cannot save you. Only Jesus' blood. And so that was the message that Paul was trying to get to Timothy. Because he said, all the rest of these folks done left me. Demons have forsaken me because he loved this present world. But that was in the first, cha first chapter, Lisa. But over in the fourth chapter, he gave him some even worse news. He said, not only have they left me, they're going to leave you. <laughs> He said they're going to they gonna heap to themselves. Teachers telling them. That's like come, don't bother these folk about where they go to church. They're going right where they want to go. They're hearing what they want to hear. <laughs> but you see, when you get so to the place, he said, I can't be satisfied with this right here. I need the truth. <laughs> and so he says, now, what I want you to do is, I, I, my time is almost over with. I would have kept the faith. I'm, I'm moving on. <laughs> but what I want to do before I leave here is I want to place something in your hand. <laughs> I want you to keep the message. Keep the message. Keep running. Don't you stop. I can't go but so far. But you just passed. I'm, thank you. I'm passing the baton on to you. I have not diluted the message. I haven't given up. I, I haven't turned the message around. But I'm giving it. That, that which I received, I'm giving it unto you. Yes. What I want you to do, stand up, Mother Blaine. Mother, mother, no, stand up. What I want you to do is, I want you to take that same message. Yes. Don't you dilute it. Don't you take down for no man. Don't you worry about it because I know you are a little timid, but God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. I know you get sick sometimes. Drink a little wine for your stomach's sake. But he said, look here, don't let nobody despise your youth. But I want you to, Timothy, and I want Timothy, when you get the message, I want you to give it to other faithful men that they'll take it on and pass it on to somebody else. Thank you, Jesus. Look at somebody and tell them, I got a job to do. I got, I got a job to do. I, I ain't got time. I ain't got my time to be worried about how you feel about me. I'm worried about you. I don't like him. I don't like, baby, let me tell you something. I got, a, I, got to, I got to pass the baton. God has given me life in my hand. And I can't take down on it because you don't like it. Because I know that the only way into eternal life is through the true gospel. And the true gospel is not pay your tithe. The true gospel is not you do this. And you, the true gospel is not just do your best. <laughs> but the true gospel is believe in your heart <laughs> that he died <laughs> on a rugged cross. <laughs> and that they put him in Joseph of Arimathea's borrowed tomb. <laughs> but he didn't stay there. <laughs> Early on the third day morning, he got up. And God gave him victory over the grave and over sin. The Bible said that he himself purged us. Pass the baton. Life 101. You see, you can get so caught up in you. You ever been there? Life has so many troubles. Life has so many obstacles that come your way. I don't care if it ain't nothing but a flat tire. If you ain't in the right place, that'll ruin your whole day. If you don't realize, fool, God done gave you money to buy another tire. All you got to do is go buy another tire, put the tire on, and keep it moving. Because I've got to pass a baton on. When you begin to realize that it's bigger than you. You see, folks want to get you caught up in you. If they can get the focus off of what you're doing and put it on you. <laughs> hey, it ain't hard. We can all find fault with each other. And that's what's happening in church now. They spend in church now trying to see who good and who ain't good. But God said that a long time ago. In Romans, the third chapter, he said there's none good, none that do it right. So we, we can just put that to rest right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Paul said one time later, Deborah, he said, my heart's desire and prayer for Israel is that they might be saved. You know it's folks that think they saved and ain't saved. You know they ain't saved, they just don't know it. But he said, my heart's desire and prayer for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal for God. They got a guitar at the church, they got an organ, they got a, a hundred member choir. I bear them record, they got a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. You come to church and you shout all church and you ain't, ain't nobody taught you nothing. You don't know nothing. 
and you can't do any better than you know to do. I need somebody to pass the baton to me. I don't care what color you are. I don't care what you look like. I don't care who like you or who don't like you. There's a certain baton that I need passed to me. And you know what? You don't pass the baton to nobody that ain't going to run. Oh, no, 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 no. I done run and sweated and trained, and I done put out all this effort, and you think I'm going to put the baton in your hand? But, but God got to find the right one. God got to find the right one that I know, honey, they don't like you, they don't think nothing of you, but if I put it in your hand, if I put it in your hand, you're going to take it on. Just, just pass the baton. Life 101, this ain't nothing complicated. This is just me realizing what my purpose is. My purpose is not to see how many cars I can get, uh, how, how many houses I can acquire. Because when you leave here, they ain't put none of them houses in that thing. Mm -mm. I got a Rolex at home, but I, I would bet you a, <laughs> that Rolex ain't going in there. They might put it on my arm, you know, why, why, to make y'all think. But right when they get ready to put it, I know Lady Devin gonna say, hold on just a minute. And this he'll justify. He can't tell time where he's going. <laughs> they, they say ain't no night, they, they ain't no night the sun gonna she'll give a scripture on it. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Just pass the baton. He said, and the things that thou hast heard of me. So you got to keep the message pure. But, but that now there's gonna be pressure on you yeah. to give over. Because as he said, he said, now, Pepe, if you go back up to chapter one, what we preached about last week, he, 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 said, he said, now, all of them, in verse 15, this thou knowest, that, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me. The message of the cross is persecution. And that's the reason Paul says in Philippians, beware of dogs. You see, folks in church love to do something. You, you see, they love to have activities going. That's the they got, you ain't got but some, mem some members, but y'all got 10 ministries. <laughs> ain't, ain't but some members, but y'all going to church seven days a week. The children don't know them. Then they wonder why when the child gets 17 or 18 years old and everything, that they down in juvenile and everything, because you wasn't raising your child. You sitting up in church. <laughs> And you up in church just jumping and shouting and you ain't learning nothing. You don't know the 12 tribes. You don't, you don't even know. It always tripped me out when they asked me, so what's the name of your church? I said, Manassas Christian Fellowship. What's that? How long you been going to church? How long y'all been going to Bible study? And y'all never came across the 12 tribes, the half tribe, Manasseh, Joseph, none of that? No, they haven't. Because they ain't passing no baton. And that's the reason if God give you the baton. Now, nobody passes the baton except the person who gets it. The people that's up in the stands and everything, they don't get to pass the baton. But if God has put something within you, you have a duty to pass that on to the next generation. So Paul says here, Paul never asked them, Sister Davis, to build a monument to him. Paul never asked them that when y'all, when I'm gone, I want y'all to name a church after me, which they have named a whole lot after him. It's a St. Paul. <laughs> Paul never asked them to do anything for him. Paul says, what I want you to do is, is that the message that I have given you, I want you to pass this on. Now, watch the kind of people that he wants you to pass it to. Commit thou to faithful men. You see, brother, but Lay said, I'm way, way up here. I can go shake hands. I'm the pastor. I can do it. <laughs> do you know that people, it's hard to find a faithful man? It's hard to find a faithful In order for you to be faithful, you have to get out of yourself and allow God because we are normally not faithful. We, we are people who we run real hard for a minute and then we get tired, we get bored, and we move on to something else. But you can never, jailer, be successful until you are faithful. Right. You see, many people go to college, but everybody don't graduate because they're not faithful. 
You, you, you happy when you go get the books? You happy you show everybody your admittance letter? You, you tell everybody where you're going, but baby, that ain't all that's to it. That ring, Alexis, when you get married, I hope that you just, you know, go on down to the courthouse, get married and start living. Because all of that whoop to do I went to one of my friends' marriage, and, 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 and she came out of one end of the church, and he came out the other one, singing to each other. <laughs> they wasn't together much longer than the song. <laughs> I'm that preacher. I'm here to tell you the truth. It's more to it than the wedding ceremony. It's more to it than a white dress. He said, I want you to commit this to faith for me. Mm -hmm. And see, what God knows is, is that the reason that you're here, because he got the right one. Oh, folks don't think too much of you, but that's all right. But he got the right one. Because all you was waiting on was the truth. So, God, if you give me the truth, I promise you that I'll run with it. God, if you give me the truth, I promise you I'll be faithful with it. Because have you ever been in this shape right here? Well, you found yourself falling down and you, you found yourself living worse than folks that ain't saved. You found yourself doing stuff that folks don't even know Jesus do. You find yourself confused and say, you ask the Lord yourself, you tell God, you say, God, I know I love you. God, I know that you did something in my life. I know you changed me. I know, God, that it was you. And I don't know why that I can't do no better. When you get to that point, you see, but God is, is getting you to the point where you'll give up on yourself. Because you see, you came to church and they told you that all you got to do is just do this and do that and do that. And you tried to do that, but you weren't able to keep it. And when you weren't able to do it, then you became discouraged. Then you became despondent. And you see, you was judging your inside by other folks outside. You see, people always look like they're doing better than you because you don't know the real story. If you really knew the story, you'd realize they ain't doing no better than you're doing. Most of the churches that folks go to see free, that the people out here stay married, the pastor can't stay married. No, he, he, next thing you know, that the person that was sitting next to you, now they sitting next to him. Thank, thank. God's grace. And that's the reason when Paul begins to pass his baton, Brother Jeff, he tells him, he said, be strong in the grace. Timothy, don't you try to do this on your own. Timothy, do not. God has brought you this far. Have you ever seen people like that? that? That somebody or something took them so far and then it's kind of like, oh, thank you, Jesus. It's kind of like you, the person get beside themselves and then it's like, you know what, thank you, I got it now. And, and that's what Paul is trying to tell Timothy. Timothy, don't get in that shape right there. Don't, don't get to the point that you think. You need to always remember that if it had not been for the Lord, you see, Fred, I ain't nobody going to make me take down because I have a doctorate degree. I might seem ignorant to folks and everything, but I promise you. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I passed two bar exams on the first try. So I ain't as dumb as you think I am. Okay. All right. But the thing about it is, is that I know that if it had not been for the Lord, I give God all the praise. I give God all the honor for what he has done, what he's done for me. I'm gonna pass the baton, mother. You can't make me shame. You can't make me. And that's the reason that Paul told Timothy. He said, Timothy, do not be ashamed of the testimony of the Lord. All right. All right. So I know what you say. You say, well, I ain't shame. I ain't shame. I tell anybody that I belong to a church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? I know one time I was preaching and it's old Jewish man is about to die. He got a lot of money, and y'all think a whole lot of him. But I told the truth, and I could feel the spirit that was on y'all. You see, because they don't believe in Jesus. They don't believe Jesus is the only way to be saved. And, and you know, a lot of smart folk don't believe that. And when I said that, I said, you know what? I thank God for him. He's a good man. But I sure feel sorry for him because in hell, he's going to lift up his eyes. Y'all, you should have seen how folks. But see, you're ashamed. You see, you, you're ashamed of the testimony of Jesus Christ because Christ Jesus' testimony is this right here. Ain't no couple of ways to be saved. Ain't, ain't, no, ain't no other way. 
Uh-huh. I'm going to pass the baton. You see, because we, when you start talking out both sides of your neck, you confuse folks. When you're over here at church, you're talking about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But when you get around the educated folk, when you get around the folks of influence, you say, well, you know, we all got one father. And there, there, there's more ways to Memphis than going up 61 and, and, and whatever. You're ashamed. Because when you stand flat-footed, Brother Davis, and you tell them, I don't care how much money you got, I don't care how much people think about you, except you believe on the death, burial, and resurrection, in hell you'll lift up your eyes. And I'm not saying that because I'm condemning you. I'm saying it because I was past the baton, and I've got to pass I That's what Paul told Timothy. He said, look here, let me tell you something. He said, I know that you, see, Timothy is no different than us. All of us get nervous. All of us get afraid. All of us get intimidated. You know, when, when he sent Timothy down to Ephesus, he told him, he told the people down there, he said, don't y'all be so hard on Timothy. He didn't have to do that for Titus. He sent Titus down there to collect money. You know, you got to be really hard, hard to collect money. You can't send no timid person to get no money. But he told, he, he had to look out for Timothy. He told Timothy, he said, don't let them despise your youth. You know, sometimes people find any kind of reason to try to say ain't nothing to you. You too young. Are, are, are you this or that? He's, but, he, but he told Timothy, he said, look here. God ain't given us a spirit of fear. You know, I can just imagine in my mind, but Jeff, you know, you, 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 you coach track. You know a lot more about this than I do. But I can imagine here a guy is sitting there and he waiting on the last leg. And, and, and now, uh, his man is running behind the man that's on the other side. And this guy right here that's on the side, this guy here is the champion. This guy here ain't never been beat. And so now he's waiting on the baton. And the guy talking to him while he's saying, he said, I don't even know why you all not even get the baton. He said, I'm going to smoke you before you ever got it. Don't, don't embarrass yourself. Just act like you dropped it. Don't act like you got it. But, it, but, it, but he told him, he, he said, look at here. God has not given us a spirit of fear. That, that which I'm going to tell you what, whatever God tell you to do, Jayla, the devil going to tell you that you're not able. The devil going to tell you you're not qualified. But what you do is you leave West Helena and you go all the way down to Atlanta. And you walk down in Spelman just like you walk up in Spelman like they built the school for you <laughs> Let me tell you something. When I first started practicing law, I'm telling you what, I was so scared. I didn't even know which out. I, I didn't know which side to sit on. I didn't know this and I didn't know that. But I want you to know God has not given us a spirit of fear. And you can touch my hands. They, they too soft to pick cotton. I ain't got nowhere else to go. Huh? I'm going to tell you what, boy. I put on my best $100 suit and I walked up in there. <laughs> Thank you, Gene. My best $7 tie. And boy, I started walking like a lawyer, talking like a lawyer. I went up there with the attitude, if anybody going to be intimidated, it's going to be y'all. Because my God passed the baton to me. He could have left me in the crack house. But God gave me the baton. I can't preach no more. Clap your hands bill and a bill and we've got to get the attitude and our people once had this attitude you hear me sister Scroggin? we once had the attitude and maybe we don't have what we used to have maybe we're not able to do mama walked around with holes in a slip in order for you to be able to buy a dollar band book Joshua got when, when, when they got ready to cross over I'm sorry y'all let me get this out when Josh and them got ready to cross over after being in the wilderness for so long, he told them, said, hold on, said, put 12 stones down here. And he asked him, he said, what mean if these stones? Because you see, Moses had just passed the baton off to Joshua. Moses said, look at here, I got to die. I can't go over. This right here won't make it over in the promised land. There's a change of seasons, and you got to know when the seasons change. So put these 12 stones in here. And when your children ask, Better pass the baton to your children. Don't you let these Negroes make you shame about what you went through, what you went through. If you'll tell your children the truth, they'll be equipped for the future. But you don't put them in a fantasy land, making them think that you ain't never had no troubles, making them think that you didn't never go through nothing. You tell your parents, your, your children the truth. If when you was coming up, I know y'all ain't going to like this right here, but I'm this preacher. You ain't got to do nothing for me. 
if when you was coming up, you messed around and <laughs> you were promiscuous, you got a venereal disease, your child grown now. Sit down and talk with your child and tell your child the truth. If, if, your, ch if your child only knew the journey, they would know that they are not bad. They would know that whatever they're going through, they can overcome it. But you have painted this picture. <laughs> Pass the baton on to them. Give them the truth. God gonna sustain you. These folks ain't gonna do nothing for you no way. They got this to say and that to say. But if God be 